Hello, my name is uh, Mark Ellis from Stick and Rudder Studios, and today in this tutorial I want to take you through virtual device layouts and some of the more advanced topics uh, around them. So what we're going to cover today is a little bit of history um, about uh, virtual uh, X keypad and what it originally supported and how it's evolved over the past couple of releases. And then I want to take you through a walkthrough um, of a particular configuration and I want to show you uh, how you would use the shift mode. Uh, we'll also talk a little bit about the special, the special overlay mode that's available uh, using shift versus units and the pros and cons of doing that. And then I want to cover uh, key index numbering versus rows and columns in virtual devices. And then we'll talk about multiple virtual devices with the same layout and multiple virtual devices with different layouts and how you can um, you know, configure them and change the size. So with that in mind, uh, let's go ahead and get uh, X-Plane up and running and take a look at a particular configuration. Okay, uh, what you're seeing here is um, the X-Touch Legend sample uh, that I've done, and I've modified it a little bit for the purposes of this tutorial. Um, and I'll walk you through what those changes are. Now, I picked this particular example primarily because, uh, you know, the window's kind of small and I can fit both that and the configuration editor up on the same screen while I'm recording this video. Uh, but, you know, the concepts here would work for any, any size virtual device. Um, before we get into this in great detail, let's talk a little bit about history. When X Keypad was originally designed, it was originally designed to support the PI Engineering X Keys keyboards. And if I just bring this over here and show them to you real quick. These are all the various hardware devices that PI Engineering makes. Um, and they're basically uh, hardware keyboards um, where you can program the LEDs underneath them. They have a red and a blue LED underneath. And the keycaps on these things will actually come off. Maybe we can actually take a look at that real quick here. Yeah, they show it to you right here in this particular image. Um, so you, you've seen a little bit about these in some of the previous tutorial videos, but the main thing to understand is that these um, keyboards supported this concept of, of a shift. And you actually can see it here. If you look at the upper left-hand corner of the keyboard, there's a green LED, and then uh, in the next image here, there's a red LED. And what these keyboards could do is just like a normal keyboard, you could have a shift mode on it where if you put it into the shifted state, the keys could have a whole different set of definitions, just like the concept of lowercase letters and uppercase letters. Now, um, so when X keypad was originally written, I had to design it to support that concept. When we added virtual devices, I chose to make virtual devices for the most part, emulate uh, the way the hardware devices worked, and then I added all kinds of extra capabilities to them, like you know, being able to have different layouts and, and having your labels be able to be different colors and, ch and dynamically changing the legends on the labels. But the basic concept of a shift state uh, was built into the virtual device just because that's the way the hardware devices worked. The other thing um, with these devices is that, that they come, they came in a lot of different flavors. You know, so you had XK60s, you could have things like an XK80 here, which is an 80 key one, even an XK128, which had a lot of keys on them. Uh, I had planned in advance for people having the ability to put multiple devices on, this, on their same system. And these devices either could be multiples of the same kind or they could be multiples of different kinds. And that's where the concept of units came along. Um, because as you put devices on the system, X keypad had to be able to know which one to talk to. Is it, is it the first one, the second one, or the third one? So we had this concept of unit numbers. And when we, we did virtual devices, we brought that concept right along too. So what I wanna talk about today is not so much about the hardware devices, but with virtual devices, the benefits uh, and how you would use a shift state and a little bit about units and different layouts on virtual devices. So with that, let's come back over here and take a look at this particular sample here. Now, 
first thing I want to do is I want to show you um, what this shift state's all about. So what I've done is I've created a, a new set of keys on the shifted state. And basically, the way you get to shifted state is you simply check this checkbox. And uh, you'll see it actually over here in the configuration editor. And in the shifted state, you have a whole bunch of new keys that you can do. And you simply go back and forth between these like this. And what I did in this example is I made a bunch of extra keys here, which what they actually do is they control the views in X-Plane, right? So if I, you know, click on view two, it'll come around, it'll show me, you know, pick all the different views. And you, these keys could be anything you want. I just happened to decide to, um, you know, make it do views. So shifts are very simple. You know, all you do is go to the shift state, you click on the key, and you change the definition of that key. It's just like having a whole bunch of extra keys that you can very quickly shift back and forth, you know, between. Now, there is a unique feature on a virtual device unit where you could say, do I want the shift state to work like it is right now? Or you could have the shift state work in a concept of overlay mode. It's almost like a, like a punch through. And let me show that to you. If we come over to units on this X-Touch Legend unit, there's a checkbox here called overlay mode. And if I put it in overlay mode, what happens is when I'm in the unshifted state, I'll see these keys. And when I go to the shifted state, any key in the shifted state that had a definition, it'll simply replace the keys on the non-shifted state um, mode. And what that allows you to do is keep some, some keys up and other keys simply get replaced. And you could do the same thing by simply copying these two lower rows of keys over to the other shifted state. Like, you know, what I could do is if I take it out of overlay mode, I could have come over here and copied these two lower rows of keys and then just pasted them right in here. Nothing wrong with that. The only problem is now you've got two copies of a key definition you have to maintain. If you ever decided to come back and make a change to, let's say, the way this beacon light key worked, You'd have to change it not only here, you'd have to come over here and change it on this one too, if you would, if you basically just had a copy. And what this allows you to do is have one set of key definitions up and then replace ones with the shifted state by just having anything in the shifted state where there's a definition, it'll just bleed right on over with this overlay mode. Okay, so that's, that's one way you could make your virtual devices work. Another way is I could have all of these um, shifted state keys, I could put them in a different unit. Why don't we go ahead and do that? Let's come over here and I'm gonna add a unit and I'm gonna call it views. Now you notice as soon as I typed in views, up here on this virtual device, I have little buttons here I can switch back and forth between these views. Okay, and I could have up to eight of these different units that would show up in this one virtual device unit, or virtual device uh, window. Okay, so let's say as an example, maybe what I want to do is I want to take these shifted keys, I'm going to move them out of their shifted state, and I'm going to put them over into this other unit. So to do that, I'm just going to go into um, copy-paste mode. I'm going to select these keys. I'm going to come up and do a cut, select this unit here, which is views, and I'll do a paste. And then all I have to do is take it out of copy paste mode. Now what I've got is I have these views, these view buttons are in the separate unit. And if I come back over here, the shifted state's got nothing in it. So it's kind of empty. Now you might, might ask yourself, well, what's the pros and cons of doing this? Um, not real, not a huge amount. I mean, the big advantage I think to doing it this way is that these views, you get a button up here that shows up that says, "Oh, I know that if I want views, I can come over here and I can quickly select that, and I could see it." Versus having to remember, okay, that you know, in the shifted state, you know, which way was it? And oh, by the way, here's what's interesting: is I when I pasted those in, I pasted them in the shifted state. If I on that unit, if I really wanted them in the unshifted state, I just got to come back in and do that again. You know, go into edit, uh, go into copy paste mode. Here, I'm going to do a select all. 
I'll do a cut, go to the non-shifted state, and do a paste. See now, it's in the right, right state. So that's one example of how you can do things. Now, let's say as an example, maybe I really would like to have this view in its own separate virtual device window. No reason why you can't do that, okay? All you have to do is come over to virtual device layouts, and I'm going to add a new virtual device. And just for the sake of it, do it, I'm going to make this the same size. So this one here was 10 by 3. I'm going to come over to this one. I'm going to say custom. I'm going to make this one 10 by 3. And I'll just say create that virtual device. And if I bring it over here, now you can see I've got two of them. And the other thing I could do with this is I could come in here on this second virtual device and I could say that the preferred unit for it is actually going to be the views. And if I refresh that virtual device, you can see that you know, now this is what's going to automatically be, be selected. Anytime I open up that virtual device window, it'll have the views, you know, selected on it. And if I come over here and check with this one, uh, on this virtual device, I'm going to say that its preferred unit is the X-Touch Legend. And I can turn around and refresh that one, okay? So with it like this, when these two virtual device windows come up, they're going to come up with their preferred units selected. But I can easily go back and forth between them. Like I can come over here and click on this one. I can make this one go back over this view, uh, like that. Uh, so one might ask, what's the benefit of having two windows versus just one that you select between them? Uh, you know, again, not too much. Maybe, maybe you want to have both of them up at the same time. Maybe you're going to put this one over on a different monitor. But the more common thing is, is I want them to potentially be different sizes. So let's say as an example, this particular uh, virtual device down here with the views unit, I'm only showing 10 keys. And maybe I really don't want these blank rows of keys underneath them. So I could make this virtual device be a different size. Now, before I go change that, let's talk a little bit about key index numbers and how they relate to how they get shown in a virtual device. Um, you'll notice that any time you do a key definition, uh, and I come over here, we always refer to the key by an index number, right? So this COM1 key is index number one. This COM1 transmit key is index number two. This COM2 key is index number three. You could see that the way we refer to keys in the editor, it's by index number, not by row and column, okay? And the way these keys are going to get laid out on a virtual device, it always starts counting in the first column. It goes through each of the rows, 0, 1, 2. Then it's going to come back up and go key index 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, etc. Now, the one disadvantage with this is if I add or remove rows from a virtual device, the keys are going to get scrambled. They will not be in the place that they were in before because of the way they get numbered. Let's take an example of that. If I come in on this virtual device, you know, let's come over here to this virtual device layout, I'm going to change this so that, let's say as an example what I wanted to do, I wanted to make this be just one row. Watch what happens. If I do this and I don't do the adjust layout, and I just come over and say refresh this virtual device, Notice what it did. Everything gets a little scrambled because the key number is the key numbering is different, right? Now it goes, you know, zero, uh, where we used to have a, a one and a two, you know, because that row's gone, you end up with two blank, you know, keys here because they there used to be some blank keys down below. Okay. Let me go back and put this back to where it was. and refresh that virtual device. Now you can see it gets back. Now, X keypad, it actually has a unique feature in it when you make these bigger or smaller, I can tell it what to do. Let's say as an example, if I make this one smaller, 
I could do an adjust layout. And I could say what I want to do is I want it, if I don't check this box, delete rows from the top, it's going to be by default, delete rows from the bottom. If I'm, you know, changing the rows to a lower number. And in this case, I don't want to affect this unit up here, the X-Touch unit, because I like the way that one's laid out and it's actually being shown in a virtual device with the dimensions that it was designed for. But this one, I do want to change. And I can say adjust. And what it does is you'll notice that it removed those rows of keys. Same thing is true with this one. Say, as an example, with this X-Touch legend, let's say I wanted to add a whole nother row of keys. And here's a good example. Maybe I don't really want these views, you know, to be, um, you know, maybe I don't want these views to necessarily be there, but I want them to be in a whole nother row. Let's actually come back here and revert this configuration. So I now got them back over here in the shift state like this. Let's say, as an example, what I want to do now is I want to make this virtual device taller by one row. Okay? And then what I'm going to do is take these view keys and I'm going to move them down to that bottom row. So let's take a look at how that gets done. We come over to this virtual device layout. What I'm going to do is I want to increase it. I'm going to say adjust layout. And now I'm going to say add blank rows. Eh, you know what? Let's put them at the top add blank rows to the top, and I want to do it to that unit. Now you'll notice it may, may be a whole bunch of blank rows up at the top. I can come in here, I can say edit, and uh, go to uh, copy paste mode. I'm going to copy just these keys. I'm going to say cut them. Uh, come back over here, and I'm going to paste them up here. And there we go. So the key thing here is changing the size of a virtual device once you've got keys defined on it, unless you use that this little adjust button here where you could tell X keypad how you want to manipulate removing rows or inserting rows or, or that type of thing, even columns. Like if I wanted to insert a column to the left here, you can use this adjust layout to shift all the keys around. Um, if you don't do that, they're going to get scrambled. Um, and that may be okay. You might want that. And then you're going to have to drag and drop them around and lay them out the way you want, which in some cases, that's exactly what you're going to want to do. Um, but I did want to show you how the key indexes the way they get associated with a virtual device layout is purely based upon uh, counting from the first column through all the rows in the first column. And the general rule of thumb is if you change the number of rows in a virtual device and you don't use this adjust layout button here, it will end up having the key show up in completely different places simply because of the way that, that numbering works. Okay? So I hope what this does is it shows you some of the things you can do with either using shift mode to, you know, have options to show keys, uh, the overlay mode, which is kind of unique that allows you to have uh, keys defined in the shifted state bleed through um, to keys that were defined on the non-shifted state, um, how you can have multiple units and operate them all within the same single virtual device window or multiple virtual device windows that are laid out with the same grid layout or multiple virtual device windows with different layouts. So there's a lot of, you know, capability here with how you can um, use this, but I did want to walk you through some of these more advanced features of virtual device layouts. So I hope that shows you some of the tricks of the trade and some of the things that you can do, um, and I hope you enjoy using X keypad. Thank you very much.